The 2023 Blue Jays in a nutshell. Your offense beats up on bad pitching. But the moment they face competent pitchers, they fall asleep. Other than Bobachet's double there in extras, the Blue Jays had two hits since the fourth inning. Both were with two out and nobody on. And the Jays lose 7-5 to the Tampa Bay Rays. And now our focus turns to the Seattle Mariners and Texas Rangers game. And, uh, you know, I think, isn't Seattle, is, is Luis Castillo on short rest? Let me just check that. He pitched on the 25th. Uh, I think it might actually be one, one day, one day short rest for Luis Castillo. And the Rangers are firing out Andrew Heaney. That's later tonight at 7.15. But going into the ball game, you wanted to win. You wanted to celebrate on the field. Pop champagne bottles, have the fans be jacked up. But it's the 2023 Blue Jays. They get you close. They make it stressful. And they hurt you in the worst possible way. I'm going to fast forward. I don't care about the first... You know, who will score the first four runs for either team. Dalton Varsho, shout out to him. 20 home run season. Had three three, uh, three of the five RBIs he, drew, he drew, drove in. And Springer drove in the other one. But again, this is against a guy. Uh, who? What the hell was his name again? Uh, yeah, what, Corbin? No, Cooper Criswell. Guy who's pitched in AAA basically all season long. Uh, sure, you teed off on him. Great. But then you face Andrew Kittredge, Jake Diekman, uh, Robert Stevenson, Pete Fairbanks, and Chris Davinsky, and you get absolutely nothing. Sure, the double to Bo, Bo and extras, but the run obviously doesn't count towards Davinsky's ERA because it was the ghost runner at second. They shut you down. And we will pick, I'll pick it up. Uh, sure. Romano, great job in the eighth inning. Hicks comes out in the ninth, was outstanding. Quick, quick work at the top of the lineup. Made them look stupid. Bottom of the ninth, you have a chance. Two out. Kevin Biggio with the dish, and he rips a line drive right at the left fielder. Where have we seen this before, right? It's just the story of the season. It really, really is. When you think the team's down and out, they'll give you that small hope and then rip a ball right at somebody, and it is what it is. So we go to the top of the 10th, where it all occurred. So they obviously have a guy at second base. And Jonathan Aranda hits a fly ball to pretty deep left center field. Kevin Kiermeyer makes the play at the wall, a little jump. And uh, and some for some reason, the guy at second base didn't tag up and go to third. So you're thinking, okay, you got the one out. Guy's still at second base. Great stuff. They intentionally walk Josh Lowe. Makes sense. And then they go to the bench for Rymel Tapia. Former J. And as a clear Toronto sports fan, these moments haunt me. Former players coming back to hurt you. We're lucky Reese McGuire doesn't have a brain in his head, or at least didn't for that moment. Because the Red Sox probably could have walked off the Jays, and he could have been a big part of that. And today, Rymel Tapia, a guy who... Go- Let me actually check this out real quick for you guys. Just to reiterate how completely painful it was. Rymel Tapia actually has 16 walks in 62 games. A guy who with the Blue Jays last year didn't walk very much. He walk, gets walked by Jordan Hicks with a full count pitch to load the bases with one out. Then they bring Yandy Diaz off the bench and you're thinking, oh God, Kevin Cash, like, damn you, man. Like, do we just leave your lineup. Let Yadi Diaz have a full game off. Well, Hicks overpowers him, throws some perfect pitches, strikes him out. You're thinking, holy crap, big moment there. You got two out now. And the number nine hitter, Taylor Walls, who's hitting a buck, what was it, a buck 90, uh, well, 201, but a buck 99 going into that at bat. You know, and he hits a soft line single. Two runs score. And the Rays lead at 6-4. And then an infield single. <laughs> Scoring Rymel Tapia, of course, to make it 
And at that point, I think most Jays fans were like, yeah, checked out. Like, with the way this offense has been and the inability to be clutch, really, other than guys like Danny Chanson, who's not going to be playing unless you make it to the ALCS, which, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that. Um, Bo Bichette, you know, Vladdy, God, it was a horrific afternoon for Vladdy. It's just an awful, awful afternoon. Gets crossed up twice by Cooper Criswell. Like, how many Ks did Criswell have in this ballgame today? Three. Two of them were Vladdy. One flailing at a bad pitch way out of the zone, and then taking a slider down and in, which, if he had a feeling it was coming, could have turned on that thing and crushed it, but he strikes out looking. Vladdy ends up going 0 for 4 with two strikeouts in a walk today. And he pops up on the infield in the in the bottom half of the tenth inning. If Seattle wins tonight, you gotta pitch Gosman tomorrow. Which sucks. Cause you really didn't want to do that. And now the Jays can't celebrate, and they won't be celebrating till later. In the sense they probably won't be celebrating till tomorrow. If they even make it at this point. I know it's start, the doubt is starting to creep in now. Because with Texas throwing out Andrew Heaney. And, they, and Seattle's got Luis Castillo on the hill. Doesn't look good. It really doesn't look good. And tomorrow, who do they have going in that game? At least as of right now. Uh, does, does, uh, George Kirby is going to be going for Seattle. They have their best two guys going in the final two games. And for the Toronto Blue Jays, we all the whole talk, you know, leading up to this, the final two or three weeks is like, we all said, you can go back to my videos, I didn't want this last series to mean anything. I really didn't want the last game to mean anything because you wanted Gosman to go for in game one of the playoffs. But if Seattle wins tonight, you got to use them. And it doesn't guarantee anything. Today was the day you had to lock it down. You didn't do it. Now the doubt is going to start creeping in for Jays fans. And as a Toronto sports fan who have seen collapse after collapse, more in particular these guys here, the vibes are there in my head. And the unclutchness, that's not even a word, but I just made it. Or maybe it is a word, I don't know at this point. Of the Blue Jays, scares me tomorrow. Because with Yandy Diaz not starting today, maybe he starts tomorrow. But they're probably going to rest somebody else. Maybe Randy Rosarino, I don't know who the hell they're going to rest. But Ryu wasn't good. He was awful in his three innings of work. Trevor Richards allowing a two-run shot to Harold Ramirez. You had a 4-2 lead at that point. Um, and you gave it up. And your offense just went away, basically the rest of the game. You had some opportunities, man. You really did. Right? You go to the ninth inning. Was it the was it the ninth? I think it was the ninth, right? Where they had the leadoff base runner. I think it was uh, was it Kevin? Yeah, Kevin Kiermaier, the leadoff base runner. Kirk's at the plate, and he rips a ground ball right at the third baseman double play. And his fault? No, no. Hold on a minute. What happened there? Was that the eighth inning? Yeah, that was the eighth inning against Pete Fairbanks. So who who's the one that did that? That was uh, bottom seven, no, bottom eight. Yeah, Bo Bichette walked, and then Kirky grounds with a double play, and then Kiermaier singles right after that. And you're like, yeah, of course he did. Of course he did. The inability to be clutch with this team, it's incredible. And now we sit back and wait. All right, so you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. Uh, you enjoyed the video and not the game because you're obviously not a Chase fan if you enjoyed this one. Uh, hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit, 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 appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you have not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. What'd you like? What'd you not like? What are the feelings like right now? Because they're painful. They are dreadfully painful right now. I understand they're still in an okay spot. Seattle has to win tonight. We have to lose tomorrow. They have to win tomorrow for them to make it or for them to pass us at least and us to be out. But for the love of God, get it done, please. 
I want to be done tonight. Before you know, I want. I, I, I part of me wanted Seattle to win last night so the Jays can win their game today and do it that way. But now I don't care. I could care less. Love Texas to lose tonight or to, to beat Seattle tonight and end their dreams and have the Jays celebrate tomorrow after a meaningless game and not pitch Gosman. Absolutely. But I'm exhausted after today. So you know what, guys? Like I said, do all that stuff down below. Comment, Discord, TikTok, Instagram, all that. Twitter, is that, all that stuff. Or sorry, X. All that stuff is down below. So follow up there if you've not done so already. And I'll talk to you guys uh, later tonight. Leafs edition. Preseason game against the Habs in Montreal. And as for the Blue Jays, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Game 162. Could be do or die depending on the result tonight. All right. See, well, I know I wouldn't say do or die because then Seattle would have to. Well, but it, every game's at three o'clock, so it might be do or die. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and not the game today. We'll talk to you guys then.